Hey guys, welcome to Loudly Creative again today, June 3rd, 2014. El Pais in the news, rainy day in Miami. Starting out with the news of the king in Spain, Juan Carlos, who has been uh, taken uh, the plead or the acceptance of his abdication, which was demanded by the people during the years 2012, reaching a spike on demand from the popular consensus in 2013. Uh, on his birthday during uh, January and February terms of this year, he had enough time to recover his health from certain operations that brought him back to stability and time to think and divulge these themes of doing what was right for their uh, system. A monarchy uh, merged with a socialist reformation of a democratic instance where uh, they have lack of power within the Congress, but still uh, engage in participation of the future norms on the trends within the beliefs of the people to uphold a system that binds them historically on respecting their cultural background to a monarchy at state. Uh, Felipe VI will be assuming the reign, and he is actually being guided as the example of progress through the simplification of this overdue change from the demands of the people within a country that is relying on the youth and their idealistic changes within future optimism to take charge and eventually lead this crisis in Europe to have some progress. We have that the Palestinian governments have abided on unity and this is a very delicate subject where Al Fatah and Hamas have formed an executive technicality within the democratic state. Abax keeps being at the front of the diplomacy and security and Israel is considering this option as an election towards terrorism is a very delicate subject where the divisions of power have been dealt with and several nations including the Gaza Territory, Palestinians and Israelites are debating the fact that union within separatism before has led to certain amount of peace within one region but still offers the solution of terrorist inclusion at states that were distancing themselves from peace. Basically, if we have three points, or let's say three states, Israel, uh, Palestine, and the Gaza region, and they're all having a struggle based on religious, democratical, and political influences, and in the mid-grounds, which would be the Palestinian territory, there is an agreement for peace within two groups that before were at war. Uh, there might be a leading of beliefs that bring some distrust within the regions that are outside due to the fact that they stop fighting to find a merging of peace with an interest that politically are just sparked up to gain economical grounds. This may lead to corruption if they are not true in intentions. However, it seems to be a slight step, step forward and hopefully this group of terrorist bindings will have no direct causation on troubles around progress. Later on, El Assad is trying to legitimize his advance in the Syrian presidentials. This has been a country that has had lots of Lebanese militarism uh, during the Hezbollah crisis and it has been crucial during their victory. The article says that in uh, opinion of Damasco, the militaries are defending the front with certain advances. For example, there is an interview of a man that's having a drink at a bar at 3 and a bomb falls 15 minutes away from it. This is the piece Syria is trying to actually partake in with normality. The amount of people that have died during these encounters have cost around 200,000 million euros. Now that's a chunk of cash. But that's not it. That's not all. It's, the crisis has been so grave that it is rounding up to a war. More wars of the Western society has been engaged recently. And the Colombian crisis with the FARC. For example, 160,000 people 
have been detained. No, I'm sorry, died. 160,000 people have died during the serious, serious crisis and war conflict. Not only that, 6.5 million have had to abandon their homes. Now, that is something that must be considered as a grave instance. Hopefully, after the 2011 uh, movements, the capital has become a pacific, yet mainly an active participant of the civil war that has been isolating the region since 2011. So they're an active war at peace, and the reigning powers have not found the body of civil defense to portray attacks from regions that insist within the tribunal division of political inferences, which none have reasonings on idea of how to clarify for a future fact and the gains of their own expansion on beliefs of followings within the people to sustain support on less division and more addition of growth. Later on, we have that Russia is in the news on a two-page spread of El Pais, where there is basically a celebration of a man who is called Volodymyr Parazuik. He's a hero, 26 years old, and during the extradition of the last president in Russia, who was Viktor Yanukovych, he made a speech when he was actually announcing that he was finding solutions to portray his discontent. And through the power of his voice, he allowed the people to raise their voice higher, demand his demission, and Yunukovy had to get on a helicopter and leave, making democratic voice the implementation of force to apply itself. Sadly but true, after these events, Ukraine fell into a division cycle where Kiev has tried to solidify their region. The Donbass region has separated themselves, literally, without much of an avail from international instances, but they have also gone through democratic progress, where, for example, Poroshenko is now assuming the power through the last elections of Ukraine, and the Donbass region has had lots of encounters between pro-Russians and separatists, such as the taking of the airport, a week pass where dozens of victims were quantified, and Kiev took possession of these reigning regions, the helicopter that fell for the Ukrainian government, and now the other burdens found in Legna, in pardon me, Lugansk, where insurgents have taken uh, power of the Russian border. Uh, these in, these insurgents are usually people that are in discontent with the reigning authorities, and they are creating separatism within the separatist uh, assumption of their liberalization from Ukraine and their pro-Russian uh, feedings on the idealization of becoming a USSR reigning power of the past. Uh, the issue is more cultural within the youth movements where students of the cultural transformation of the world and their nations have inclined in elevating their voices and reaching the markings of changing, honestly, the impact on future movements. This man, Volodymyr, just made a speech which might not indicate his whole responsibility on the issues that are happening right now, but it definitely made a falling of a rock on the water that generated a wave which we live now. Russia on another article, has accepted the temporal solution of the gas crisis between Ukraine and them being the mediation of one-third of the consumption of the European Union gas. Two-thirds comes from Ukraine. Ukraine was actually disappointed at the Russians elevating their prices after the ex-president Yanukovych, which had an exclusive agreement with the Kremlin, denounced to his power and gave the people's power back when he was abdicated and forced to resign, bringing the war conflict to spike up during the separatist highness we are now living. Uh, 
Ukraine found a solution by paying 578 million out of that 2.5 thousand million that the Kremlin has demanded due to debts that have accumulated with past spiking of the prices and unpaid tolls. The EU has stepped back and noticed that they are definitely not going to participate in a triangular negotiation due to the fact that they believe that stability must be brought back by the parties involved in the bilateral agreements, which overall seem to have made a step forward. In China, after 25 years, there is on the 3rd of June and the 4th of June the celebration of the sad events that took place in Tiananmen Square. The crisis, more than being a similar notion of what we live today in other countries of socialist and communist implementations, which have overall failed and have had to adapt it to the overwhelming speed of competition within capitalism, or however you may reflect the system of actually investing your time in the division of the best intentions to serve and produce goods for gains and the stability of wealth sharing among others has raised a red flag due to the fact that China has not been able yet to stop their censorship on their historical passings. Back in the pro-liberal movement of 1989 that led to the Tiananmen Square peaceful protest, the government took force and took the tanks out, clearing and massacring people which have not been quantified in the statistical knowings of their people today. Many students, young Lings and young professionals of China don't know the truth about what happened in Tiananmen Square still and have been indoctrinated to follow an economical belief of just investing their time in producing goods and services instead of participating in their political influence on those goods and services they create. This may be seen as protectionism of communism within the elasticity of change they truly are not implying to apply for the best of their nation. Too much control sustained by the resources. We have seen this in countries that have too much resources and don't develop. In the case of China, they have enough resources, such as human capital, a uh, extremely inflexible intake on their perspective of change within political structure, and that might be negative for their slope if their overheating of economic cool participation ever leads them to fail. Hopefully, the change of the Western influence to impact their voices and mergings on codependency to be globalized will open the eyes of the Chinese leaders. Finally, Obama will try to slow down Putin's massive popularity within the media and social cultural integration of separatist unions of Europe. He will arrive, or I pardon, he has arrived a couple of miles, kilometers, 800 kilometers away from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And some people have seen this as a negative due to the fact that John F. Kennedy and Reagan actually visited Berlin during the crisis of the division amongst them amongst the Germans, and they gave beautiful speeches that have been commemorated to represent positive influencings of the falling of that great wall, which overall led to the jogging and the after step of that obstacle implemented by the division of what now we know as the economical engine of Europe, Germany. Either or, we have that Obama will be visiting uh, Polonia, which is Poland. He will also be visiting Belgium, where the capital of the EU uh, political legislation parliament parties are gathered. And finally, France. France is suffering from one of the spiked up uh, alliances of change within their centralized. And as the political steam engine, he they are still the quantified uh, leaders of voicings within cultural references on how the world may be informed of democratical novelty. Germany leads the way economically, France politically. This happened when Germany 
in the World War II. Well, actually, this did not happen. This was rooted historically because of the premise of the following. When Germany invades the French territory during the World War II, they actually dominate and Germany becomes, Europe becomes Germany or whatever, term, the German Empire. Then the U.S. liberates France from this, assigning France the responsibility of the alliances of Western culture and the mergings of the centralized spheres that bind to the Orient, which is China. They lead the way politically and reestablishes the Union through the Marshall Plan, per se, on Reconstruction, Germany being the powerhouse on motor uh, expansion between the industries and their productive lines takes charge of the economic inferences, and today we have that fruit as a consequence of the dealings. Germany invades France, France loses power, consolidation of the Allies, the Allies assign power of political inferences, and they recover stabilization, which now is being dealt with due to the fact that one-fourth of the French community believes in national and domestic investment rather than unification of external notions in nations that are weakening their national sovereignty. That's the main issue of the National Front with Marine Le Pen leading the way. Obama will be in Poland celebrating the fact of their exemplified democratical progress within regions. He will also visit Brussels. He will not meet with the Russian uh, partaker of action, Putin, Vladimir, but in Normandy to celebrate the sep seventh decade of progress between the finalization or culmination of the war. There will be honorings of allied forces to gather an event where all the leaders of the representing nations within the sufferings will commemorate the losings or losings of 4,000 Allied troops in the 1945 loss of the German Empire by the Nazis overtaking within idealism. It might be reflected above the notions where idealisms might lead towards extremist thoughts and it all merges down to the Middle Eastern issue as well where politics will play an increasing role in having change, realization between men that might have closed their pattern of thought due to the same principle of extreme idealization. Hopefully this will be a visit that will enjoy peaceful mediations and Obama will lead towards the best. This has been Loudly Creative again. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back tomorrow.